Hello, good afternoon, everybody. It's a few minutes past one, so let's get started with our webinar on treatment technologies. We'll have two lectures today. First is a treatment, a lecture on treatment of PFAS contaminated rinse water. A second is a session, a lecture on the remediation of PFAS contaminated soils. We'll have questions on both sessions at the end of uh, our session. So if you have questions, please wait a little bit until after, after the second lecture. If you want to, you can already put them in the chat so our speakers can uh, can have a check on uh, the question and prepare their answers. Our first lecture is on the treatment of PFAS contaminated rinse water. It's by Jürgen Bühl. Jürgen is a geologist. He started working as a consultant in 1989 um, and has worked on remediation since 1997. At the moment, he is working with Cornelson Umwelttechnik and has been doing so since 2004. He is focusing now on PFAS removal and is working on, on projects in Europe and the US. Jürgen, the floor is yours. So I will talk about the treatment of con uh, PFAS contaminated uh, rinse water and the remediation of PFAS contaminated soils. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the uh, the, the question um, I put on the screen first is uh, what is reason for for rinse water? Why is it uh, why is it a topic? Then we will talk about uh, the rinse water itself and uh, the treatment of that rinse water. Um, and the second part will be uh, the soil treatment. <clears throat> And uh, here on the screen in the corner, you can see uh, such a mobile unit that is able to to treat rinse water. Um, and um, we do this now with a partner also in the United States. Um, what is the reason and why is it a topic rinse water? Um, it is ha it has to do with uh, EU regulations um, and uh, EU regulations um had have caused a ban of PFOS um, in uh, 20, uh, uh, 2011 um, and um, now nowadays uh, we see a, a ban of P4 coming um, and this will be in force uh, 2025. Um, this has an impact on the actual situation uh, already. Um, now we uh, have the situation that no training with P4 containing foams are allowed anymore. And furthermore, um, if there is a liquid fire um, from January next year on, um, it is allowed to use uh, PFAS, P4 containing foams only in case um, if the firefighting water is collected completely. Um, so there is some activity going on and that um, generates uh, some, uh, some measurements on the client's side, um, industrial clients um, and firefighters. And more will follow, certainly. Um, therefore, I, leave, uh, I left one plank open and you can see some, uh, some key regulations on the bottom of the slides. So the uh, clients are now in the middle of the process of moving away from uh, fluorine foams, so the, um, the traditional AFFF foams, um, and they want to move to fluorine-free foams. And part of this transition process is the cleaning of firefighting trucks and and buildings. Um, so the firefighting system inside of buildings, uh, and you can see uh, some examples here on the screen, uh, larger firefighting trucks from airports in Germany, um, and also the, the cleaning facility on our side uh, for cleaning the tank of the firefighting truck. Um, up to 1600 liters of, uh, of AFFF can be in such a track. Um, Furthermore, it is required to clean all the pipework, the pumps, the mixing unit uh, where water is added uh, to the concentrate <coughs> and goes to sprinklers or goes to the cannon, um, as you can see here in front or on top of this uh, uh, valuable truck uh, worth more than a million euros. Um, so we need to step a little bit to the to the to the left uh, now to to understand what what goes on on, on coming slides. Uh, several years ago, we have developed a solution um, here. See uh, visible on 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 the left top left uh, corner of the slide, called Pafluat. This liquid is added to PFAS contaminated water, as visible here in uh, in such a glass jar. Um, and after proper mixing, 
um, the water looks different. Um, and what happens um, between glass jar one and two? This is visible here. Um, the PFAS, um, the normal PFAS you can uh, see on a uh, on a report from the lab, um, they are negatively charged, slightly negatively charged, um, and this uh, perfluorate uh, liquid is slightly positively charged. And this difference in electrical charge, this stimulates interest um, in each other. So the PFAS uh, shows interest in the perfluorate and and the other way around. So they generate uh, a flock now. Um, and um, this can be a, a macro flock, um, and this macro flock um, of the PFAS molecule and our perfluorate molecule, um, this macro flock is now um, visible in the water, and that is exactly what happened on, uh, on the way from jar one to class uh, jar two. Um, we have now tiny little flocks in that water, and this water goes through a uh, filtration paper um, and you can see residues um, on this pa uh, paper material um, previously the filter and these residues they contain the PFAS um, sludge and the PFAS and the, and the perfluorate molecule and the removal of this uh, flux means um, this paper takes around about 85 to 95 percent of the PFAS out of the water just the minority of the PFAS stay dissolved in the water. And this plays a role in treatment processes. Um, we come to that. So rinsed water and firefighting water, um, they are pretty interesting uh, from um, from the composition. Um, several years ago, we we simulated such a fire and, and, and generated such a such a water as you can generate it uh, when cleaning a firefighting truck. And we sent that uh, um, that um, sample to the lab. And um, we asked them to measure the PFAS concentrations plus to measure additional compounds in that water. And they came back, told us they are around about 1700 ppb or micrograms per liter of PFAS dissolved in that water. But um, based on uh, our um, task, we, they also told us there are also uh, further fluorine compounds in the water, organically bound. Um, and um, furthermore, there are also surfactants in that water. It is a standard uh, foam from a German manufacturer that we used for that kind of test. Um, and the key thing is that the, co the concentration of the additional compounds, also the fluorine compounds in the water, in addition to the PFAS, can be much higher than the, uh, than the PFAS values, although they had also been quite high with uh, 1700 uh, micrograms per liter. And the graph shows you where the PFAS are. And they are here, this tiny little uh, bar um, in this graph. The fluorine compounds, um, the other fluorine compounds are much higher in concentrations. And the top end uh, are the anionic uh, surfactants in this foam uh, we used for such a test. And all these compounds, they play a role when you consider remediation. Um, of such a water, firefighting water or rinsed water. Um, and uh, we have tested our solution with that water and uh, results had been um, that it is possible to remove quite a lot of the PFAS. Um, here in this particular example, uh, the elimination rate had been around about 99% and um, the uh, elimination rate or removal rate for the anionic surfactants uh, close to 100%, um, but also the it was possible to remove a lot um, of the uh, additional fluorine con uh, fluorine containing compounds uh, can be capstones, which is a which is an interesting compound these days um, in foams uh, plays quite an important role uh, in many foams, um, and um, we had no in impact uh, on additional compounds in that water. So when considering treatment um, of rinse water or firefighting water, they both are quite challenging for the standard treatment techniques. Um, because of the presence of further compounds, further compounds in addition to the PFAS, um, it can easily uh, happen um, that uh, all the adsorption places on, on, on carbon 
um, are uh, already occupied uh, by different compounds. Um, and so here we made some studies uh, two years ago. Uh, it took quite a while. Um, and it's published in, in, an, uh, in this report here. Uh, so the concentration in the, in the PFAS water had been around about three and a half thousand micrograms per liter, um, mainly capstones here in this case, uh, and six to FDS. Um, and after, and here you can see the, the, the bed volumes so when pumping it through a, a carbon vessel or an ion exchanger. Um, and after a few bed volumes, you see a rapid increase of the effluent concentration of the vessels. Um, and this behavior is almost not predictable um, and makes it difficult to consider the treatment of such a water, um, firefighting or rinsed water. But if you establish a pretreatment step, um, then it is much easier on, and uh, more predictable uh, what happens on such a um, on such a filter vessel. And um, predictable means um, that the majority um, of the uh, PFAS containing particles are already removed um, on this filter. You have this filter paper in mind um, and they are on this filter bed um, and uh, no longer dissolved in the water. Um, and so just the, the minority uh, of the PFAS are still in that water as, as ultra uh, uh, little flux or still dissolved in the water. Um, and that makes the life and the, the business for the carbon much easier. And this is represented by the effluent concentrations after pretreatment behind the carbon vessel, though, and after the ion exchanger vessel. So the concentrations are much lower. So they, they stay lower for a much longer period, and uh, that makes it easier um, to treat such a water um, with uh, a combination of both techniques, means pretreatment first and then carbon vessel or ion exchanger vessel behind. <coughs> um, firefighting, firefighters came to us after we had published uh, first data um, and asked for cleaning uh, German army first. Um, and uh, they have treated their, their vessels with water uh, only and uh, came to us. Um, and our observation was that with a uh, solution that uh, contains a little bit of PEFLAT, we can have a better cleaning process of tank, of pipework, of cannon, uh, of such a firefighting truck. And in addition, we can use that liquid also for the treatment of uh, the rinsed water uh, from the truck. And um, so um, the PFAS um, are settle at the bottom of a, of, a, of a sedimentation tank and just a tiny little concentration is left for the, for the uh, carbon vessel for doing the polishing. Um, based on the truck, it means Starting concentrations after cleaning with water can be in a range of several hundred micrograms per liter in, in water in the tank. Um, and um, after cleaning, the concentrations can be below one, um, one uh, PPB, one microgram per liter uh, in the same water, in the same uh, truck after doing all the cleaning. Um, and that brought us a lot of uh, trucks uh, to, our, to our side from, from the big German airports. Um, and um, luckily, we could treat their trucks um, in in uh, in an, an appropriate way and in an expected way. Um, so, doing both cleanings, uh, truck cleaning and uh, cleaning of uh, the um, of the rinsed water or the, the the water from the cleaning process. Uh, as I said at the, in the in the second slide, uh, we have a partner in the United States doing the same thing as we do. Um, and they published in uh, summer this year uh, also what happens if we do just the triple rinse with, with normal water from, uh, from, uh, from the uh, public water net. Um, the concentrations of the PFAS in such a truck stay unchanged. And it's the same thing with, uh, with firefighting systems in a building um, where also an, an increasing uh, interest is, um, is really uh, visible these days. Um, after cleaning it, uh, tank, pipework, pumps, uh, mixing unit um, with an with a improved solution involving PEFLAT, uh, the concentrations 
um, of the PFAS and uh, the PAFLAT are much lower. Here you can see uh, the top range of concentration are 65,000 uh, nanograms per liter, so around about 65 micrograms per liter is uh, the top value of concentrations in the water of such a truck. Um, so the conclusion for the rinsed water, um, the PFAS values can be really high. Um, in a truck we, we measured up to 40,000 micrograms per liter, 40 milligram of uh, PFAS in such a truck. And unfortunately, you need to consider that there are more unknown compounds possible in such a water. Um, and that plays a role for the treatment purposes. Um, and uh, therefore, treatment of such a water is very challenging for carbon and or for ion exchangers. Um, but pretreatment removes the majority of the PFAS. Um, and this is very uh, useful um, for the GAC as the mass of the load is no longer uh, going right on the carbon vessel. Um, it is already removed as a particle, um, and this lowers also the the volume of residues of, of waste coming from such a treatment process. Um, and in a larger uh, system uh, where PAFLOAD is part of it, um, you can really see this PFAS sludge sliding down here, such a metal plate, uh, and it accumulates in, in, a, in a buffer tank um, at the bottom of uh, such a uh, slide. So we can now move on to the soil, um, or if you want to interrupt, we can have some questions on the rinsed water, or I will continue uh, with treatment of soils uh, and uh, speak about alternatives and um, and come to uh, conclusions again afterwards. Um, as we mentioned in the beginning, we will take questions at the end, Jürgen. Okay, that's good. Then I can continue. So. Um, here is a paper published uh, by the Environmental Agency in uh, Germany, uh, 2020, also in English uh, available. So techniques for soil treatment are soil washing, immobilization, landfill, incineration. Um, and uh, these techniques are well developed and um, established and feasible. Um, what it, does it mean if you uh, uh, put this uh, uh, kind of uh, technique in the field? So based on data of Germany, I can't say anything about uh, Belgium. Um, we see the washing um, at about 60 euros per ton, the immobilization around about 80 per ton, landfill um, 120 per ton and incineration far higher. Um, but also incineration is not very often applicable. Uh, the capacities are not high enough. So, but techniques have also limitations. Um, and in Germany, we see the washing very successful as for gravel and sand contaminated with PFAS. Um, normally, um, it is also said from the uh, provider of such a technique, the, the concentration of fines, clay, silt, should not go beyond 10%. Uh, I learned that in Belgium you handle this differently uh, and allow higher uh, quantities of fines. Um, the PFAS accumulate there um, and therefore it is required to find a solution uh, for uh, the fines, landfill um, or possibly immobilization. Um, and um, it requires a larger volume of soil. You can see here the uh, bigger piece of equipment. Uh, so it requires a larger volume of soil to be um, economically successful. So the landfill side in Germany, um, we have quite large distances to landfills, and that means 500 kilometer one way um, to bring PFAS contaminated soil to landfill. And we also need to face uh, limited capacities um, for soil on landfill, and it is only allowed to put soil on a landfill if this landfill is already equipped uh, with the leachate water treatment system uh, in place and uh, low mass of, keep, uh, of PFAS um, in such a soil uh, wastes uh, some capacity in my view. An alternative could be rambind, so the immobilization, so the, in the top right corner of the, of the graph showed you the immobilization as an option and that is the background of it. So the rambind powder um, consists of activated carbon, alum, aluminum hydroxide, and a clay mineral called kaolin. Different forces um, um, keep the PFAS in that soil, 
Um, and um, what it means uh, from the application side is you put that powder to the soil, mix it properly as shown here with the equipment. Um, round about 1.5, 2% of the powder are required, proper mixing um, and 24 hours um, and the chop is done. Uh, so the fixation is done, uh, which that does not mean the, the, the soil um, is now solid. Uh, soil stays unchanged. Um, you can test the um, the results in advance in the lab. Um, that is that was done here with the soil uh, uh, from a German side. Uh, 2.3 had been the PFAS concentrations, and adding 1.2, uh, 1.3, 1.3, and so on. Um, lower dosage rates of uh, of that powder reduced the concentration of the PFAS in the LO8 and at 0.5 um, uh, percent rembind, um, there was nothing detectable anymore in the LO8 coming out of that soil. So the application started right afterwards. Uh, so you can see the powder on the soil. You can see the mixing unit. You can see the treated soil as soil as before. Um, here, due to the uh, angle of the light, uh, it looks a little bit more gray, um, but um, here you can see the natural color of that treated soil. People ask you, and especially regulators are interested, um, what is the long-term stability like uh, of that kind of immobilization or adding that powder to the soil? What happens after several years? It is difficult to predict because the material is uh, several years old, and it is no site available worldwide uh, where uh, it had been done 20 years ago. On this particular site in the US, it, the soil was resampled um, after three and a half years, and um, the legibility stayed unchanged um, in this soil um, after this three and a half years um, here, as this example showed. Um, several studies are made in the lab um, um, testing decades of rain or simulating decades of rain. Uh, on the final slide, you can see um, some, some papers which are valuable and useful in, in this context. One thing plays also a role. Um, after treatment, um, we had this issue on, a, on an airport site in Germany where the grass showed enormous concentrations um, of PFAS um, because it, uh, the soil was uh, seriously contam contaminated. So the concentration of PFAS in the grass are much lower in, on treated soil and an earthworm uh, in, who moves in that uh, treated soil um, does not take um, uh, any PFAS uh, um, up anymore or it is significantly reduced uh, the PFAS load in this in this warm. So the conclusions are PFAS are really an increasing issue in Germany. We can find it on normal rural fields. We can find it on brownfield sites. Um, it hinders the reuse of brownfields because of the limited capacity of landfills and, um, and the development of a different approach nowadays. Washing is applicable on larger sites with a lot of soils. Landfill is still the main thing to do. Uh, or uh, people keep uh, their hands off uh, that brown field and don't use it. Or the immobilization is now seen as an interesting solution for the, for the future because um, we can achieve non-detect in the elevate of such a soil after treatment. And which is also beneficial, the PFAS, the, the concentration of the powder is adjustable to the PFAS level in that soil. And, um, and we see a reduced uptake and all the uh, lab studies uh, show um, long-term stability so far. And here you can see two of the uh, studies from the universities, and I'm happy to take your question. And thank you very much for your interest, um, and um, thank you. Thanks a lot, Jürgen, for a very interesting presentation. As mentioned, we will take the questions at the end of the next speech, and uh, that's a, uh, a speech on uh, the remediation of PFAS contaminated soils. You've already given uh, insight in a specific technology, but uh, our next lecture is being given by uh, Dirk van Loek and Richard Loekman from uh, RSK. And both gentlemen uh, have been working in the soil sector already for, uh, for decades um, with uh, different consulting companies. And as mentioned today with RSK, um, I think Richard, you're the one who is going uh, to give the lecture.
or Derek. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you um, very much, Victor, for giving me the floor. Richard could not be available. So, uh, but um, I'm giving a, a presentation about the study we did last year uh, on behalf of the OVAM. So um, I will first share my screen. Um, now, um, yeah, we got uh, the um, task from uh, the OVAM last year to um, to do a study about the um, available remediation technologies, cleaning technologies, especially uh, of PFAS contaminated soil in the, the Flemish region, not only in the Flemish region, but also in the region uh, in the region uh, uh, around uh, the Flemish uh, region, the Flanders, in Holland and in Germany. So uh, we focused especially on uh, Flanders and the Netherlands because that's when one market and there's a lot of capacity. So um, I will give some uh, information on that. Um, I will go to my phone. Okay, do it. So, um, <clears throat> yes, the, the study uh, we uh, got from, uh, we had to perform from the, from the OVAM. Um, we um, talked about uh, the, um, uh, the the cleaning of the soils and uh, especially the different aspects uh, which involves the cleaning of the soils. Uh, what is the soil composition? What is the uh, clay and organic matter, um, uh, matter content and the co-contaminants on the uh, cleaning of PFAS contaminated soils? Uh, which PFAS concentrations are allowed and which end concentration should be reached after treatment, that is very important. What is the currently available capacity per technology and which technologies are available for process uh, water treatment? So these are the issues we tackled in the, in the study. Um, so um, we uh, started with a literature study of uh, available uh, literature. Uh, that was done by Richard, and uh, then we had also uh, direct contact with selected market players and specialists in the Flanders and the surrounding surrounding regions, especially land management organizations, uh, soil treatment centers, and specialists uh, in uh, the different countries. So land management organizations. Uh, we also contacted uh, the OVB, we contacted Grondwijzer, Grondbank, and so on. We contacted different uh, contractors like uh, DME and uh, uh, Envisan and others. Uh, I've, I've not mentioned everybody, so excuse me. Uh, but uh, we contacted in total for uh, representative um, uh, contractors which are do, who are doing um, the cleaning of soils. Um, yeah, I have to say that um, at that time, because we did a study, uh, let's say um, at the end of the summer uh, last year, uh, the, the PFAS um, um, problems were um, uh, emerging, let's say, and uh, up to at that moment, there was little experience with, uh, with uh, PFAS uh, clean, salt cleaning. Um, some companies had some information, so had some uh, uh, batches uh, cleaned already on PFAS, but not everybody. So it is uh, a, 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 a status uh, of the situation in the Flanders, and that should be considered as, as such. Uh, um, I have the impression that in other countries, like in, in the Netherlands and in uh, Germany, um, this uh, cleaning is already occurring a much longer time. So we started uh, with the literature study um, <clears throat> and um, the, 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 the number of uh, uh, articles are booming, so it was not uh, uh, possible to 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 go uh, to go to much uh, articles. Um, we selected the articles which are easily available um, and which not should not uh, which are not paid. Um, and we concluded that um, from these uh, uh, articles, uh, there are some uh, water treatment techniques for processing. 
uh, which are selected. I will uh, handle some at the end of the presentation. But what was also mentioned is that uh, the salt treatment technologies, which are feasible, are salt washing and thermal treatment. And alternatives for these salt uh, cleaning techniques are stabilization and immobilization of PFAS by adding adsorbents. Uh, like uh, Jürgen already said in his uh, presentation, based on, for instance, activate, activated carbon biocar, aluminium hydroxide, kyanite, but also zeolites. They are proven and used not in the Flanders, uh, but uh, especially in other countries like in Germany, apparently. Uh, the, the commercial project in uh, Austria was Rembind. Um, there's little or no experience in the Flanders. Um, then we have also uh, phytoremediation. The uh is doing uh, investigation on uh, the PFAS uh, uh, remediation by plants and uh, especially hennep. And uh, the other uh, alternative cleaning technique, it's not in fact a cleaning technique, but what is a cleaning technique uh, uh, is isolation. Uh, in most, most remediation techniques, you should uh, be aware that the PFAS is staying uh, uh, and is not destroyed. So washing in the Flanders, we have a, a very large capacity uh, of physical chemical treatment plants. Uh, approximately between the 300,000 and 600,000 tons a year can be cleaned. Uh, they, these, uh, physical treat these treatment centers are located near waterways, um, so they, the, the, the excavated soil uh, can be uh, transported by boats uh, uh, and should not be transported by uh, trucks and so on. So um, then um, the intake concentrations of these uh, soils to be treated can be up to 300 micrograms per kilogram if they can assure uh, a cleaning efficiency of 99%. Then you reach, three, you reach uh, an end concentration of three micrograms per kilogram dry matter PFAS. Uh, and below this concentration, the soil can the, treat, the clean soil can be reused freely. That's very important. But intake concentrations can be sometimes higher uh, uh, when uh, the soil can be reused under certain conditions. For instance, in the, in the uh, when you're considering uh, soil remediation projects, sometimes the, the treated soil are uh, redisposed. Let's say in the in the um, in the cleaned area, in the remediated area, uh, depending and the, 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 the end concentrations for cleaning are the end, uh, the concentrations which the end concentrations which are determined in the um, soil remediation project. In the Netherlands, we have a, a little bit a different situation. Um, there, they say uh, soil washing is uh, effectively for 95% of the PFAS. Uh, uh, concentration. So, if you have uh, 60 micrograms per kilogram of PFAS, that can be treated in a in a, in a treatment center, physical chemically, and then you can also you get also three micrograms per kilogram output, and that salt can also be reused. So, in the Netherlands, the treatment centers have much more severe intake concentrations than in in, in the Flanders, um, and. Uh, hey, 60 micrograms, maybe up to 100 micrograms, um, uh, as the discussions with these uh, uh, Dutch uh, contractors, uh, uh, they said that 100 micrograms was, was absolutely a maximum. Um, the information in two, 2021 um, was that uh, approximately uh, from the contractors we contacted, the four contractors, uh, were, is that 47,000 tons of PFAS contaminated soil was uh, uh, treated, uh, and the other um, two or three, two from the four uh, uh, treatment centers, they had no experience at that time with uh, PFAS cleaning soils. Uh, they had only conducted some pilot scale tests so far. Uh, the cleaning process must be extended. Uh, we have an extra PFAS water purification step. Um, 
uh, uh, washing of uh, soil is especially for um, um, contaminants like heavy metals, like uh, some uh, hydrocarbons and so on. Um, and uh, PFAS uh, re requires a special water pur purification step to, to get out the uh, PFAS in the water in the process of water. And that is uh, that additional uh, step is activated carbon or iron exchange raisins. Um, you have to be aware that uh, physical chemical treatment is a water consuming process. So the more uh, soil you have to treat, the more water you have to add. Uh, and that is very important because you don't have to uh, discharge the um, the, uh, the the cleaning water, the process water to surface water. Um, so um, water treatment is um, is, um, uh, is is important. You should uh, the, the 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 PFAS which is um, coming from the the soil is uh, concentrated uh, by soil washing in the sludge fraction, in the fine fraction. And that fine fraction is then uh, put on a landfill. Um, most of the PFAS is coming to the sludge, is uh, concentrated on the sludge fraction. The, um, the, the sand fraction, which is coming out of the soil washing process, can be reused uh, as long as uh, the three microgram per kilogram concentration is reached. So soils can be treated physical chemically on condition that uh, less than 40% fine materials are present in the soil. Uh, and these fine materials are the particle size uh, fraction of less than uh, 63 micrometers. And if it is more than 40% of fine materials, then it should go to a, to a landfill. Um, and then you should ask and request in the Flanders a non-treatability document from Ove Bay, and then you are allowed to uh, uh, landfill the um, the, the uh, uh, contaminated soils at a lower cost. So you don't have to pay um, some taxes, some additional taxes. Um, the sludge fraction from the soil washing process is uh, is um, dumped on the landfill um, in some uh, salt. Uh, salt cell conditions, special isolation conditions in the landfill because there's a still a problem of leaching. Um, uh, with our discussion uh, with the contractors, um, yeah, there was also, uh, they talked about uh, immobilization of the PFAS, but there was no um, uh, experience with that. So, but I think uh, uh, the, the presentation from Jürgen showed that the rim bind is, uh, is a good alternative and could be considered. Uh, but uh, storing and uh, landfilling uh, treated uh, sludge uh, in, in the landfill in special salt conditions uh, is uh, the capacity of these uh, salt conditions are also very limited. So I don't know how this will evolve, uh, evaluate in, in future because uh, bringing PFAS to landfills is a, a, a discussion uh, item. Uh, they don't like it. Uh, it, it's, it gives a long-term liability for these uh, landfills uh, because the, land, the, the PFAS can come out of the landfills and uh, uh, via the, 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 the leachate and uh, uh, creating uh, yeah, an internal uh, problem of PFAS. That leachate has to be treated and so on, and, uh, but it's not uh, because it's not destroyed. Um, for the rest, there are in fact no uh, alternative uh, treatment technologies available in the Flanders, uh, nor in Holland. Uh, the only possibilities is uh, soil washing and landfilling, uh, complete landfilling. The costs last year is 40 to 60 euro the ton, depending upon the volume to be treated depending upon the PFAS concentrations and depending on the water treatment requirements. Uh, you have uh, different uh, types of PFASs and uh, uh, the, the presence of short chain or long chain PFASs is very important. For instance, uh, short uh, long chain PFASs like PFOS is attaching much more easy to uh, uh, granular activated carbon. Uh, short chain like 
PFBS or PFBA, they go much more easier uh, through the, the, the granular uh, activated carbon filter. So uh, it's diff more difficult to treat and it's possible that, uh, that uh, you should consider more water treatment uh, options like nanofiltration or reverse osmosis in uh, your uh, water treatment facility. Uh, I have the impression that costs are this year coming up and I say to my clients, you have to take into account 60 to 80 euro the ton. I think even uh, I, the, 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 uh, the, I, the 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 uh, I, the, the, the amount of uh, uh, soil, PFAS contaminated soil to the treatment center is much higher. And uh, the capacity is, uh, although 300,000 euros, uh, 300,000 uh, kilotons per, per year, uh, it, the prices went up. And I think they, uh, the treatment facilities are much more aware of the uh, additional costs uh, of these uh, PFAS treating uh, the soils. Um, you should consider also uh, the fine fraction. Uh, if uh, the, this uh, cost of 40 to 60 euro the ton or 60 to 80 euro the ton is for 15% uh, sludge, uh, if the, the amount of sludge is uh, of fine materials is higher than 15%, you should add a cost of 0 0.8 to 1.6 euro the ton per extra percent. So if you have, for instance, um, uh, 20 uh, extra uh, sludge fraction, 35%, uh, for instance, then you should consider at least uh, an extra cost of uh, uh, 20 euros, uh, let's say, uh, approximately per ton. Important to know uh, is that uh, the physical chemical treatment uh, don't destroy the PFAS. Thermal soil treatment in the Netherlands. We don't have any uh, thermal soil treatment in the Flanders because the Dutch treaters they um, yeah they were so efficient that the car uh, that the, there was the the the, the, the Flemish uh, thermal soil treatment plants uh, pushed were pushed out of the market. So there were two big uh, thermal soil treatment facilities in the in the Netherlands. They are still, uh, but not for PFAS, there are two, and that's ATM in Moerdijk and Theo Pau in Utrecht. Uh, they, uh, in our discussions, they mentioned that they didn't request uh, a permit for PFAS, thermal PFAS uh, soil treatment, uh, probably because of the very severe uh, conditions imposed by uh, the public authorities in, in the Netherlands. Uh, on uh, PFAS emission uh, and uh, PFAS uh, discharges to to the surface water. Um, so uh, ATM, they they said they were doing some pilot tests, and uh, but finally they mentioned uh, half a year ago or that they 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 don't want to go further on the PFAS treatment on uh, thermally. The thermal treatment is done by um, uh, thermal desorption. So it means that you increase and treat the soil, uh, increasing the temperature to 550 degrees. Then all PFAS is coming to in the volatile fraction and the PFAS in the gas phase is then treated thermally and destroyed. So most of the treatment facilities, uh, also ATM and Teopal, they have treatment temperatures of 1000 degrees. Uh, also in Derver, in Belgium has a treatment temperature of uh, 1000 degrees, but to destroy all uh, PFAS contaminants and especially the short chain and especially the very short chain, uh, the ultra short, ultra small uh, PFASs, you have to go to 1400 degrees Celsius. And that is uh, making this uh, treatment uh, very, very expensive. Um, and if you consider also the native soil, uh, the native soil organic carbon, uh, and including the uh, huge amounts of energy you need, you know that the carbon footprint of this uh, remediation technique is very low, but the PFAS footprint is very, very high then. In Germany, 
we did a very short and limited investigation. I saw that on the slides of Jürgen that uh, costs are up to 400, more than 400 euros a ton. Uh, the information we got was 150 euros a ton, but uh, let's say uh, it was a very short and limited uh, investigation. So uh, um, I, I can believe uh, that uh, that it is more than 400 uh, euros a ton uh, in Daver if they could accept uh, soil PFAS uh, contaminated soils in the installations. Uh, they, uh, they they calculate with prices of. 250 euros a ton, but um, you know, uh, thermally treating the, uh, the the soil is uh, not efficient because concentrations are too low. These facilities are more mostly used for uh, treatment of uh, waste streams, uh, which contains more than 50 milligram per kilogram, because there's a, a European obligation to destroy all PFAS in con when concentrations of more than 50 milligrams per kilogram are uh, uh, present and for soil that's rarely the the the, the case so uh, and uh, since uh, a lot of soils uh, can be excavated uh, to treat them all you have uh, yeah, I, I think you have to consider uh, years and years to be treat all your pfas contaminated soil so i see that i really passed the uh, 20 minutes I make an, a still uh, a mentioning of uh, another water treatment uh, technique uh, because Jürgen already mentioned the pure perfluor act and the, the activated carbon in the ion exchange. But another technology which was investigated at the uh, KRL uh, uh, University is the beta zeolites. Uh, beta zeolites has a very large capacity of, uh, of uh, PFOS. The investigation was done on PFOS, um, and I will show you a slide. Uh, so you see that 25% of the PFOS, uh, 250 milligram per gram uh, uh, beta zeolite, can be uh, uh, can be absorbed for uh, PFOS, um, and uh, that's 25%. Uh, while for activated carbon, it's 0.1%. This is a, a natural material um, uh, and it can be uh, recycled. Um, and um, it's, it has special characteristics pores, which can capture these PFOSs in the pores. So, uh, and um, Professor De Vos also said that this techniques uh, will I can be extended to other types of PFAS uh, he is very um, sure about that um, so and another uh, promising technique uh, uh, was um, uh, in the market uh, and there was a lot of commotion on it last summer um, they said that uh, the perfluor uh, carboxylated acids, can be destroyed by a mixture of uh, water, uh, sodium hydroxide, and dimethyl sulfoxide. Uh, the, the article said that 90% of the P4, but it is uh, only the P4 which is destroyed, uh, and, and, and the, 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 this, the, the PFAS is belonging to the to PFCAs, 90% uh, is defluorinated. Uh, the, the, the head of the PFAS is cut off, and then uh, automatically, uh, the tail is defluorinized and uh, is decomposing. So uh, this is a quite astonishing uh, technology, but it should be uh, more investigated to get uh, more full-scale uh, uh, application. Uh, I think it's too early to say that is uh, uh, a technique which can be used uh, uh, in near future. I thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you also for your very interesting presentation, Dirk. Um, there were quite a number of questions on the presentation of Jürgen, but as far as I can see, I think that Jürgen has answered all of them already in the chat. Um, I see there's also a few questions for you, Dirk, um, in the chat. Um, do landfill owners already have acceptation criteria for PFAS? What is the maximum concentration of PFAS uh, in soil that can be accepted in landfills? 
are there any standards? And could you stop uh, the presentation mode? Then we have a better look at you. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm not aware of uh, any uh, uh, exception, exception, acceptance criteria of uh, PFAS uh, in landfills. Um, I think all uh, up to now, uh, all concentrations above the 50 milligrams per kilogram, but that's very high, for 50,000 micrograms per kilogram uh, should be destroyed and cannot accept, be accepted according to the European uh, legislation. But I think uh, below 50 milligrams per kilogram can be accepted. Uh, I, and, but the most important criteria is the leaching of the PFAS. Uh, and um, there are certain conditions which should be met, which has to be met. And uh, yeah, that's still in investigation, I think. Uh, most uh, up to now, I hear that the treatment facilities, they uh, accept it in salt conditions. Uh, uh, that's the only way, uh, but I, up to now I didn't hear about uh, uh, separate treatment of uh, PFAS uh, uh, for immobilization. Yeah. I see you nodding, Jürgen, so um, you, you share the, uh, the feelings that Dirk expressed on acceptation criteria? Uh, your uh, microphone is mute. Um. In Germany, it is really also the 50 milligrams, um, and uh, as Dirk already highlighted, uh, it is normally impossible to reach that value. Um, and we we have the additional criterion to say, okay, um, we we say it is not the 50 50 uh, milligram PFAS as the EU um, uh, regulation says. We say the 50 are valid for all PFAS. Um, and um, to be on the safe side, let's say, and mm. if you are beyond the 50, which normally does not happen, uh, it goes below ground um, in a landfill that is uh, below ground, um, and then it is acceptable also to to uh, dispose or to uh, put on a landfill uh, such a high concentration. Okay, thank you. And uh, I think another question that uh, is still open. What is the final destination of activated carbon used for water treatment? Um, is it possible to recycle it? I think for active carbon, it's, it's not. It's being thermally uh, well treated, burned, I think. Eh? But uh, Jürgen or Dirk? Uh... Jürgen, if... It is it is said here, um, and it is difficult to follow each grain of of activated carbon. Really, at the end of the day, uh, where does it really go to? Um, it is said that you can re regenerate the carbon. Um, they come off the carbon quite easily. Uh, the PFAS, I mean, um, normally at around about 400 uh, degrees Celsius, you can expect that the PFAS uh, leave the carbon again, um, and so the regeneration temperatures are above uh, 400. Um, but um, it is really then required that the off gas uh, uh, temperatures then for the for the for treating really the off gas are at, in Germany it's at at least above 1150. Uh, Dirk highlighted and also in the chat here we saw the 1400 degrees, uh, which again wastes a lot of energy and requires a lot of energy um, to be on the safe side. Um, but it is simply declared by the uh, provider of the carbon uh, or, or the remediation companies. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah we do that kind of thing. Uh, the off gas is properly treated, but we find a lot of depositions on the rural field in Germany. And I believe the same thing is going on in, in Belgium and in the Netherlands, uh, where you can find PFAS everywhere. And there must be some coming from the air, simply. Mm. Yes. Uh... We had also some discussion on that. Um, of course, I, 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 we, we have uh, knowledge of um, a treatment of uh, GAC uh, in a, in a cement oven. Uh, in the cement yeah. oven, um, the temperatures are 1400, uh, 1400 degrees up to 2000 degrees even sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that could be a solution. And uh, sometimes yeah. uh, the gag is used as a, a support uh, yeah. fuel for these uh, cement ovens. And that could mm -hmm. be a solution on the long term. And uh, yeah, that is a nice uh, solution, I think. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, one additional question on, on the zeolite you showed, Dirke. You said that uh, recovery of the zeolite would be would be possible. Um, is it also thermal desorption to uh, to recover the zeolite that uh, is being used in a or proposed by the KU Leuven for water treatment? Or is it uh, some other technique? Do you have information on that? Um, I'm not uh, very aware which technique they are using, uh, but the zeolite is a natural mineral and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it can be treated thermally, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, that's no problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. It's two o'clock, so uh, our time frame of one hour has been finished. I would like to thank you a lot for very interesting presentations. I would like to thank you also, audience, uh, for being with us. We had a nice group of more than 80 persons present at uh, the webinar, so it shows very clearly that there's a wide interest. And uh, with all the attention going to PFAS, it definitely won't be the last webinar on this subject. I thank you a lot. Have a nice thank afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.